Hi everybody, it's Alicia back from my work basket for the next Tunisian crochet tutorial video. This is going to be the Tunisian crochet honeycomb stitch. It's going to be block H if you're following along in our crochet along. You can see it has a really nice texture on the front. The back's going to look like this. So you have kind of a sample, don't feel like you're doing wrong. That's what my back looks like. Um, it's actually a very easy stitch. It looks like it's going to be very tricky, but if you've been following along and you know some of the basic stitches, you're going to be able to do this stitch just fine. Um, the sample for the sample square in this white is going to be the color in my actual blanket. But to help you be able to see, I'm going to use this pale blue for the video. So let's get started with that. Um, if you watched my videos before, you're very familiar with this hook. This is my Tunisian crochet hook. It's from the Denise Interchangeable set. And I have different ends that can come off and so I can create the length I need for various projects. If you're really interested in Tunisian crochet, I highly recommend this set because you can make any project you want. You can get double ends for double crochet or Tunisian crochet in the round. Um, it also works interchangeably with their knitting needle sets. So all of my cables work together for my knitting needles and my crochet hooks. And you can use it for regular crochet as well with a short chain like this, or even just, I've done projects with it, just the short little guy. Um, one thing you'll notice is that it does look different in most cases than a standard crochet hook. Um, different Tunisian crochet hooks do look different ways. Some will just be one long metal. It looks like a knitting needle with a crochet hook on the end. Some will have a short bamboo part and a permanently attached plastic cable at the end with like a wooden bead or something down here. Um, this just happens to be mine. You'll also notice, or you should know if you haven't noticed, you're going to go up several sizes from what you would usually use for regular crochet. So even though I'm working with worsted weight yarn, my hook is a J, whereas with regular crochet, you'd be using more of like a G hook or, you know, some kind of, or what kind of around in that family. So let's get started with the stitch. And you're going to start the stitch the same way you do any crochet, and that's going to be with your slip knot. And then for this sample, I'm going to start by chaining 10. Six. And you always check that chain and make sure it's just right. So two, four, six, eight, and 10. Now the difference between regular crochet and Tunisian crochet is what happens next. And so we're going to go in, I'm going to pull up a loop, and we're going to leave that loop in the hook, and we're going to do that all the way across. At the end of our chain, when all of our stitches on our hook, you should still have 10 stitches, two, four, six, eight, and 10. That's one thing that makes Tunisian crochet different is that you have all your stitches on your hook. And so it's a little harder to drop one or to lose track of where you are. Um, so far, I'm finding a lot of people think Tunisian crochet is easier than regular crochet because you know kind of exactly where your hook needs to go. So this is going to be our reverse pass on this is called the foundation row. We're going to yarn over, we're going to go through one loop Yarn over and go through two loops all the way across. Most of your stitches are going to start with the same foundation row. Um, we've had the lace stitch, which started out a little bit different. And then what we're going to do, and this is what makes Tunisian crochet different again, is we're going to go through and we're going to leave our stitches on our hook, but we're going to start the actual pattern stitch this time. I'm going to pull my yarn to the front. Make sure you skip this first row. That's your increase row. We're going to pull our yarn to the front. We're going to yarn under through that ladder loop. And this is the Tunisian pearl, which I have a video of. Then we're going to do a Tunisian simple stitch by just going through the next one. And then we're going to bring it back to the front and do a pearl in the next stitch. And then a simple. And then pull the yarn to the front and you're going to do another pearl. And you're going to alternate pearl and simple, pearl and simple, pearl and simple all the way across your row simple and we're going to end make sure you don't forget this last stitch or you're going to be making triangles instead of squares so we're going to pull it forward we're going to go through a loop and again i'll have 10 stitches on my hook two four six eight and ten and we're going to do the same reverse pass to go back across we're going to yarn over go through one yarn over go through two and we're going to yarn over and go through two all the way across until we get back to the beginning of our row. And our next row is going to alternate. So we started with purl last time. We're going to start with a simple stitch this time. So simple stitch, purl, 
simple stitch, purl, simple stitch. I do find the purl to be much slower and a lot more fiddly than some of the other stitches. It's especially difficult because I have a camera between me and my hook. So you'll notice me kind of stumble in on some of those a little bit. And then a purl. And then we're going to end with a simple. So make sure you pick up that last row and do that simple. We're going to do the same reverse pass again. So yarn over, go through one, yarn over, go through two, the rest of the way across. You'll see it's already making that nice texture. And then we're going to go back to the first row, which starts with a purl. So we're going to yarn over, purl. Make sure you bring the yarn to the front of your work for a purl. That's what gives you that ridge that makes it a purl stitch. And we're going to alternate purl stitch, simple stitch, purl stitch, simple stitch, and we're going to end with a purl stitch in that last stitch. And alternate purl and simple all the way across. And then we're going to go back on our reverse pass. Some patterns will call it your second pass. So we're going to yarn over, go through one, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two. The hardest part of this stitch is going to be remembering which row you're on because you're alternating between starting with a purl and between starting with a simple. If you notice that purl does create that bump in front, so say that I had to put this down and I came back and I wasn't sure which row I was on. I could say, okay, this doesn't travel very smoothly. That's kind of like a bumpy road. So that means this is a purl stitch. Whereas this, see how it just travels a nice easy line? Would be a sample of a simple stitch. So I know that's a purl, which means I need to start with a simple this time. And then a purl. And then a simple and then a purl. And I'm just going to alternate simple and purl stitches all the way across again. Ten stitches still on my hook and then I'm going to go back again. Yarn over through one, yarn over through two, through two, through two, through two, all the way back across. So see, you can see if I had to put this down and I came back to it, that's a nice simple road. It's a very easy, it looks almost as if it's just one strand of yarn going down and that shows me that's a simple stitch. So this row would have to be started with the purl stitch. And you can see the difference between a purl stitch right there. Um, I'm going to actually go ahead and show you how to end off, though. I think this sample is big enough for now. So I'm going to pull my yarn to the front. I always like to finish off my projects in stitch, meaning whatever pattern I've used throughout is how I finish it. So I'm going to make a purl stitch. But instead of just going through one loop and leaving it on my hook, I'm going to go through both loops. Uh, you don't want to end your project with these big weird ladders. So I did a purl stitch. Now I'm going to do a simple stitch, but I'm going to pull it through both. Purl stitch through both. Simple stitch through both. And so it's just kind of a slip stitch all the way across. Um, some patterns would just have you not follow the stitch. And what they would have you do is just simple stitch all the way across, which there's nothing wrong with that. You can see it. I mean, it looks just fine. I just personally prefer that finished edge of doing the same stitch all the way across. So you can see there's that nice smooth road. Means I need to do a purl for this one. And end with a purl. Oh, excuse me. Oh, sorry about that. And then I'm just going to, excuse me. So then I'm just going to do that and pull my last chain of yarn through just like I.
I hope this pattern, this tutorial helps you with whatever pattern you're working on. And I'd always love to hear from you. So feel free to contact me. Have a great day.